You're listening to Two Chunks in a Hunk, a movie podcast where we give pumps and dumps. Hello and welcome to Two Chunks in a Hunk. My name is Jordan Wonders and this week I am your chunk. I'm Doge. A chunk. They call me a chunk. And I'm Carter. Fool of a hunk. Throw yourself in next time. Oh, good pull. Huh? I noticed that you uh, you called yourself a hunk. Yeah, that's weird. Please elaborate. Talk about it. Uh, I'm a hunk because of time travel. What? What? Time because Turner? on this day, October 23rd, 2018. <laughs> is that what day this is? <laughs> oh, that's today. You're right. I am in Italy. Ah. To our listeners right now. That's it true. It's the 23rd of October. <laughs> well, assuming they're listening on release day. <laughs> I'm in Italy. I'm still there. <laughs> You move Carter, forever. <laughs> Carter from the future. I know that you just wanted to go back and live the glory days. It's the year. It's the 30s now. Y'all just ended your podcast. It's been a solid 40 years. You're millionaires. You're living in the mansion created by Two Chunks and Hunk. The house that Chunk built. <laughs> two Chunks Manor. <laughs> two Chunks Manor. But no, I, I'm going on a trip to Italy for my 30th birthday. Excellent. I'm the oldest member of the uh, podcast. Only by a lot. Only yeah. by just a lot. <laughs> so, yes, I will be celebrating my 111th birthday in, 11th uh, in Rome. So, wow. wow. Uh, and uh, if that doesn't clue you in, we are not, in fact, recording these episodes that you will be listening to over the last couple of weeks and this one <laughs> in any sort of real time. <laughs> We're, we oh. have transcended your foolish mortal time stream. <laughs> and we now reside in the nth dimension where time has no Thanks, peace. Thanks, Hermione. The, the N stands for no, no time. <laughs> N stands for who knows what episode this <laughs> nice, is. that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good That's a K. We, we are, with a K. We are, recording, we are recording this episode on October the 10th. It's a cold blustery Oh, evening. crap. You know what? I honestly did mean to do this. October the 10th is our birthday. I was oh, gonna, happy oh, birthday. Oh, happy birthday, birthday, happy birthday, my friends. I was going to... I was going to get a cookie cake that we could eat while we were recording. That says Why? That chunks. makes me feel much better now. Didn't you do this? I know. I forgot. Good thing you didn't bring a cookie cake because do you realize the power I would have with that cookie cake? It shouldn't go to me. I shouldn't wield the power of the cookie <laughs> That's cake. True. That's very true. <laughs> Don't, Don't tempt, tempt me. me. <laughs> so uh, before, we, before we jump on in uh, to our movie discussion, which by the way, you guys know what movie we're talking about today. Uh, right? Yeah. Should we say it together? Uh, absolutely. That seems yes. like a fun it's, change of I pace. I love that. Yeah. Uh, Today, of course, we will the, be talking. Oh, <laughs> I missed it. Dang. Okay, start over. Okay, let's do it again. Count me down. Today, we will be talking about the movie known as The, the Lord, Lord of the Rings, Rings the, the Fellowship of the Ring, Ring or the, the Philosopher of the Ring for our friends across the pond. the pond. What you at home don't know is that that just took us about uh, six minutes to actually. It really know that. did. <laughs> it was really awful. Speaking of things that took forever to get right. This is another installment of mm-hmm. our series that we're in the middle of, known only as <gasps> Do You Believe in Magic? Wow, different every week. Never mm-hmm. sounds the same. It's never the same sound. Professional. Not even, not even once in a row. It's professional. So, Listen, do you think whenever you 2 recorded their big song, We All Love, that they were like, you know what, mates? Let's record that one again. I mean, we didn't get, we it's got me, it. Bono. It's Can me, Bono. It's me, Bono. We got it perfect time? the first mates? time, but let's just keep doing it. Hello, it's me, Bono. So before we jump into to bits and sillies, I just want to say something weird has happened to me regarding this movie over the last few days. Uh, okay. I have never met more people in such a short period of time that do not care for Lord of the Rings as I have in the last mm, 72 hours. Whoa, really? Yeah. I've how does that even people, come up? You were telling them about Lord about of the Rings? About how excited I hey, am to Hey, do you guys hate it. Lord of the Rings? Really, it was earlier this weekend, and I was, I was talking to people about how excited I am to record our episodes about Lord of the Rings. I had two people that I won't shame by saying their names, tell me, yeah, I, I don't really like Lord of the Rings. I prefer the Hobbit series, actually. Are you kidding? And they no, were not joking. Not, you're making that They up. were not joking. Now, granted, one of them is like 15, so maybe it's an age thing. No. But I don't think so either. No but. way. This came out in 2001. How old were y'all in 2001? Not even born yet. Not 15. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not 15. No, you're absolutely right. It is just baffling to me, the number of people that I have met that don't like it. But here's the other side of that coin. They're wrong. I was able this weekend, and this is very exciting for me, to watch this movie with myself, 
with my wife and with two people who have never seen. Oh, that's fun. Lord oh, of the Rings. wow. Yeah. That's very fun. I have all of their reactions ingrained into my brain. And I was like, is, how did it make them feel to have you recording? Yeah, them just recording them the whole thing. It, it, it <laughs> right was, here for all of us to share. It was a Let's go and roll that clip. <laughs> roll that beautiful <laughs> bean footage. Dim, 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 dim. Sorry, I was starting in Hobbiton. That was great. That's yep. great. Yep. That's great. <laughs> so uh all that to say, I got mm. a very fun perspective on first time viewing of yeah. this movie this weekend. Awesome. It was great. I'm riding high after watching this movie. Yes. That's what I'm gonna say. Love. And speaking of this movie. Do you know what I have for you guys? I don't. I have no idea. I think I, I can't. Know. I can't even see you reaching for your phone. I have a little segment of this show that yes. I like to call "I Am Doo Doo Trivia." Excellent. It's the part of the show where I make up a trivia and give you a real one, and you have to guess. Okay. Same rules as last time. Do we remember the score? Yeah. Uh, uh, Doge is up two to one. All right. I am. Yeah, two to one. I will read them. Trivia one. Trivia two. <clears throat> trivia one. The faint blue glow from Frodo's sword was added in post-production. <laughs> oh, man. Trivia two. Vin Diesel auditioned for the role of Aragorn. Hold on. No. Wait. <laughs> Legolas, what do your elf eyes see? <laughs> Come on, Gimli. <laughs> Let's go. Are you ready to what? lock in? No, your no, I'm not done. I'm not done playing in the Vin Diesel brain. Let's go hunt some orc. Aragorn was like, I could have beat all of those orc, but I was alone. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see the waveform on that scream. Sorry, Adam. Sorry, Adam. Sorry, I think Adam. we're ready to vote. Is uh, it time? You ready? We're guessing which one's fake. The one you made up, right? You want to guess the one I made up? Okay. I will say three, two, one, go. You will say the number. Okay. Three, two, one, go. one. The first time we've said the same number. Yeah. The made up trivia is trivia number one. Are you? Wow. wow. Are you wow. serious? Wow. Vin, Vin Diesel, Diesel. Vin really Diesel auditioned? auditioned for the role of Aragorn. Talk this about is... having a big head. This is around the time of, wait, the first Fast and Furious came out 99? Uh, 99, I think, yeah. So he was riding high. This was during the Tokyo Drift break. Oh, that's why he wasn't. He wanted a franchise, so he was like, "I'm gonna be Evergold." And then, (laughs) wait, didn't he end up actually getting to do a a role like that though in a really awful movie about like killing witches, like Witch Hunter or something? It was Escape from Witch Mountain. (laughs) No, it wasn't. That's it. (laughs) It definitely wasn't that. I'll look that up. But wow. Isn't that insane? This is, it's wow. insane. This is the best thing it that's ever did happened to me. Laugh? I'm sure people, did they laugh at him? They had to, Is right? he okay? They had to, right? Wow. Maybe that, because he was kind of small in the first Fast and Furious, and maybe he got laughed out of his Aragorn audition and was like, up. I'll show them. And I then just has, has never left the gym since then. Yeah, that would make a lot of sense to me. Wow. Is that not the most wild thing you've ever heard? I feel like we have to stop the podcast now. Okay, we're done. Okay, bye. <laughs> So, uh, in order to jump into this the right way, I have only one question. Mm. Dosh, mm. could you tell us a synopsis of this movie, please? Oh, wow. Yeah, I can. <laughs> I'm thrown wow. off by Good how job. literal that question Great job. was. Uh, so how do I begin to synopsize this movie? Mm. The Fellowship of the Ring tells the first part of a three-part story concerning uh, Frodo's quest to destroy the ring that he inherited from Bilbo thereby preventing the Dark Lord Sauron from returning to power and making things really, really bad in Middle-earth. In this installment, we visit elves and we fight orcs and the fellowship is broken by the end of it. And we go to a mine. and we, uh, They call it a mine. A mine. <laughs> a mine. My nice. cousin Bollin. So... I don't. I don't feel like I need to get more detailed than that. No, watch That's the this movie. movie. This, this is the movie. This is yeah. maybe the first movie in this whole thing, besides maybe like Infinity War, where I feel comfortable saying like, just watch this. Yeah. Please pause this and watch this movie. This movie is is very very redacted. I'm not going to tell you what I think. Yeah, of it yet. And, and we'll jump in. I'll jump in right here and say mm-hmm. maybe just because it's important for me to say this right now. We will probably be spoiler spoilering, spoiling the entirety of the Lord of the Rings trilogy think, in this first episode. I think the verb Maybe. you're searching for is spoiling. Oh yeah, yeah no, that, that might one. be it. Yeah. Uh, so if you haven't seen them, stop right here. 
Yeah, we probably should have get, given that little warning before Harry Potter too. No. But, <laughs> Sorry, <yeah. laughs> bummer. Sorry. So uh, let's jump right in, shall let's we? Jump right in. Uh, we yeah. open up this movie with yeah. beauty, in my opinion, and I want to pump on the opening scenes of this movie. You're talking about the narration, the, the the like flashback thing. I am. Yeah, yeah. it's very I very am. good. It's, it's the battle with Sauron. Mm-hmm. The first time, what is it like? Something like is that out is that like, post Galadriel talking about? How the rings were given out. Oh, it, no, is that, a, it does start with talking about the rings, is, doesn't it? Because yeah, I always, yeah. I, I, I love that too. Yeah. There's no, I a love pump, the there's a pump thing, there. Yeah. yeah so yeah. opening is excellent. So it's it's Galadriel, a voiceover from her setting the stage for like this is the this happened three thousand years ago, right. essentially. Yep. Creation of the rings, how they were given out, why they were given out, who Sauron kind of is, and yeah. then we jump to battle. Yep. Out on a battlefield. You know what I'm just putting together? Tell me. Sauron, S A U R O N, right? Yes. Characters all say Sauron. Yeah. So why was I so surprised by Smaug? Yeah, that's fair. It's consistent. That's fair. Oh, pump, nice. Pump college. to the Hobbit, I guess. Yeah. For continuity. For state. some sort of continuity. Yeah. Hobbit. That's great. You did it. Also watching, uh, is it Ian Holm? Is that the actor's name who plays Bill? Yes. Yeah. Love watching Ian Holm. Ian Holm again in this made me also retroactively pump on the casting of Martin Freeman for young Ian Holm. Yeah. It, excellent. Well, it was and good. His ability to watch and kind of mimic some of those actors. Exactly. Was yeah. I, it, in, it retroactively makes Martin Freeman's performance in the three movies we just finished talking about so much better, and, mm-hmm. which makes those movies so much more of a travesty. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sorry, I don't mean to derail. No, no, no. That's great. That's that's good stuff. Um, at our opening battle, we get a lot of big faces. Uh, we get Isildur, mm-hmm. yep. uh, the uh, who whom Aragorn is a descendant of. Yep. Yep. Uh, far removed. Uh, we get uh, our boy Hugo Weaving, Elrond. which, oh yeah. my yeah, goodness. Yeah, he's very good in this. Holy moly. Man, so good. I remember, so 13 years old mm-hmm. when I saw this movie, mm-hmm. and I remember being so pumped about it and hearing, so, uh, it got, it had hype. Like, people were saying, this is amazing. Sure. Uh, people in, in movies that I respected and stuff that I would, like, take their word for it. Yes, this is not just hyping it up. This is going to be awesome. But then for that to be one of the very first scenes, just this expansive battle scene, they flex their muscles. Oh, okay. yeah, big I was about time. to say, they set the scope of this narrative. Like it, they, they open the gates wide open. Yes. Like, hey, here's how it, big this story it is. It holds up yeah. so well. Oh, my goodness. It really so does. Well. Yeah. It really, really does. I think it's probably important to mention right now that we're going to be saying a lot of names and referencing a lot of like yeah. lineage and, and kind of, I guess, lore. I don't really like the word lore, but referencing a lot of lore for Lord of the Rings. Nice. Uh, yeah, so good one. this is, I guess, just further confirmation of if you haven't watched this, you're just probably going to be pretty it. lost. So we would recommend watch the movie for the best listening experience. Right. Mm. As pretty much always. Yeah. Actually. Kind of standard recommendation mm-hmm. for our silly show. Yeah. Shall we head to Bag End? Oh, please. Okay. So we're in Bag End. Everything. The set. I love that that place is still there. It's yes. a bucket list place for me. Yes. Um, and then the reunion. What was so neat is that they were able to do a reunion of these two people. And again, this isn't after we've seen the, the poo poo Hobbit series. It's like the first time we've seen this reunion, mm-hmm. yeah. but in the way it's portrayed, you feel happy for them to be back together. Yeah, buy, I totally right? buy it. I buy it outside of the Hobbit, but I will say watching the Hobbit movies and then going right into this, this is the first time I've done it that way. Bit. It almost enriched and informed that relationship a little bit for me. Like right. I, I hated well, because yeah. they're the best part of the, you know what I right. mean? Right. And yeah. I think that's the thing. They're the only part of those movies that works. And so maybe that's a proof of concept for a Hobbit movie done well can actually inform our understanding of Lord of the Rings and make it even a little bit better. Yeah, I yeah. completely agree. So to be episodic, I guess, for the sake of it, am I am I using that wrong? I'm trying to be cool like Doge. No, you're good. Okay, so we'll <laughs> so we're starting in Hobbiton in Bag End. Yeah. Right. And so uh, we also see, you know, Gandalf's coming up, a uh, little horse-drawn carriage. We see mm-hmm. Frodo we sitting up against the Enormous tree. pump on the practical effects. I think th- they even do it better than The Hobbit. Yeah. I get a real sense of the size of The Hobbits yeah. versus the size of the full-size people. And like the, the fact that it's, I think, 100% practical, yeah, right? Yeah, I think it is. I hate to say 100%. We'll say 99% practical. Yeah, I remember when we first see the Fellowship actually form, mm-hmm. Goosebumps even talking about yes. it. Yes. Uh, yep. uh, just looking at that frame and being like, how on earth yeah. did they make all these sizes different and everything? Because that kind of blew my mind. I yeah. like, there's a lot of things that Weta and, and people did for all of the – this one for Oscars, mm-hmm. okay? And a lot of it was cinematography, effects, yeah. and things like that. Yep. They were doing kind of – Correct me if I'm wrong, groundbreaking kind oh, of thing. Oh my gosh, nothing yeah. like this had ever been done before. So just fantastic. And yeah. so um, there's a lot of fun things that we get to do. If I'm jumping too far ahead, let me know. 
because it's also we, like we how do we about an hour to yeah talk one about of our worries movie. is how do yeah. we pace ourselves through this we have to go um, roughly three times watching speed yeah. yeah this is a three hour movie they do a really good job in the very first few minutes in bag end introducing all of our hobbits yes. and then being consistent with what they've got them doing oh the, can i just say i love all four of our main hobbits so, so much. much almost the collective four of them were almost my super pump. So much. Really. And and where they built it right now is what makes things that happen later so heartbreaking. Yes. Yeah. In in the fellowship breaking and, and right. a lot of it, it's also this this core group is breaking up, which is right. tough. Yeah. Um but then we have Sam who's kind of snooping in the garden. Um, but really it's all he wants to do is be by Frodo's side and help him. So like we see yeah. that already. And then we've got Mary and Pippin stealing the fireworks and just so causing good. a whole bunch of hubbub again, amazing effects with the dragon coming down to swoop yeah. down. It, it, that's the thing is all the effects hold up. And I think it's because we took our time and we used them sparingly. I think it's the same reason that the original star Wars trilogy holds up though. It is much older, but like in this kind of movie, we're not, we're not just throwing money at the screen right. to make a cool thing happen. Like sure, everything yeah. is thought out. Every single effect has a purpose. Right. And so that helps us kind of economize our computer images to help us suspend our disbelief. Right. Yeah. Well, and, and an example of that would be, I think, the orcs. Uh, yes. Oh my gosh. They work. They're so good in yeah. this. And, and they're all practical. And, yeah. and I think that helps us feel immersed in what is happening. Yes. Absolutely. Rather than distracted by how bad it is standing out from what is around. Well, and yeah. even, even, I mean, jumping way ahead to Moria, even when the, the orcs, cave troll. the cave troll holds up great. I was going to say, even when the orcs are climbing up the pillars. Oh, yeah. yeah. It looks and amazing. It's, it's clearly like, that's a little bit of wire work. Like they're moving their arms in a weird way and it right. doesn't a hundred percent look believable, but it still looks, it still carries that physical threat in a way that right. I think a digital creation just can't do. Right. Yeah. And so uh, here in the Shire and Hobbiton, we get a lot of really wonderful Gandalf moments. I think we get, Oh my goodness. Yes. Uh, you know, do not mistake me for a conjurer of cheap, cheap tricks. We get throwing the ring into the fire. We yep. get uh touch it. It's quite cool. All that. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> uh, we, we get a lot of, uh, for me, just kind of iconic Gandalf moments. I think. E. McKellen's performance is Absolutely incredible. Oh my gosh. And I think I think when I was a kid watching this, I missed a lot of the nuance of it. Yeah. Uh, nuance of it. Yeah. But uh in particular the moment whenever he has his back to the fire, because he can't even bear to watch to see is, is this the one ring? Yeah. And yeah. then the the disappointment across his face when Frodo says, Oh no, there's there's writing on it. It's yeah. in some kind of elvish, just the way that he subtly conveys that. He knows what they're Gandalf about to do. knows We're what's about trouble. to happen. Yeah. 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 Oh my gosh, it's so good. Yeah, for sure. It really is. Um should we should we jump to uh what would be next? Maybe Bree? Let's go to Bree. Talk about or maybe talk about Gandalf and Saruman real quick. Oh yeah, that is next, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So Christopher Gandalf, Lee is phenomenal. Oh gosh, yeah. An excellent casting. I think that that's just going to be Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. Every time we talk about a new character, I think one of the three of us is going to say they're so great or they're phenomenal. Yeah, honestly. So, Christopher Lee is excellent casting in yes. this. Yes, completely. Uh, down to the voice. I mean, everything oh he goodness, does yeah. is magic in this. Literally. Even yep. even the the nose prosthetics for Gandalf and for Christopher Lee. Like, they're both wearing false noses. Right. right. And the way that they're able to convey character through their prosthetics yeah. is just so good. Like, it, it's just, there's a whole other level of detail yeah. in yeah. the costume. The eyebrows for me. Well, and a sign deal. of good acting, too. And as, as we start talking about it, and I don't want to forget about making this point, but... Uh, we'll start saying all the names, and, and these are big names too. Not not necess- maybe Vigo Mortensen was not a big deal yet. Like this yeah. is what made him a oh, big deal. <laughs> but there are you know like Sean Bean and all these different people that end up being a part of this. How brilliant of the production side um, to make it an immersive experience to film all three at once, and essentially you're also having them just sign a contract instead of oh the first one comes out phenomenon let's make it again. I would imagine it would have cost more yeah you know, for some of these actors, and so what they've done is signed them onto a contract. And then just reap the benefits you, after that. Instead of making three movies, you're making one ultra movie. Yeah. Ultra movie. Yeah. Mega movie. Right. Exactly. Got it. Uh, so, so Saruman and Gandalf are like, no, you did. No, you're bad. No, I don't think so. You should follow me. It's a big spat. Uh, big spat. Big spat. Lots of stuff. Bree? Yeah. Yeah. You can go to Bree. To uh, the Prancing Pony. To the, the Prancing, prancing pony. pony. Oh, man. I, I got to say, I love Aragorn so yeah. much. Yeah, yeah. This is... It pains me to say that his moment in this establishment is not my super pump. I want it to be. Talking about him sitting in the corner. Yeah, yeah. with the hood and the. Oh, it's so you know, with good. The smoke coming up. 
He's yeah. so great. And I really want it to be my super pump, but it can't be. And I, I just want to say huge pump on all of the prancing pony. Now, everything you, that happens there. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Vigo Mortensen was not intended to originally be. He was not. Be. Stuart Townsend was cast as Aragorn. And so Vigo Mortensen was helping train people in sword fighting. Is that right? I'm not, I'm not familiar with that. Maybe. So that's that's how I remember it. I okay. should have double checked for the sake of the podcast. Sure, but I believe he was there to help them train in the sword fighting stuff, and sometimes he would be a stand-in. Okay, uh, almost almost like a, a Harrison Ford s Han Solo situation, to yeah. where he was on set, and then somebody does a double take and is like, "Oh shoot, Wait. you would be better," right? And, yeah. and ends up and comes in and, and does that. For and them. thank the Lord for whoever the person who right. made that call was, yeah. because yep, oh man. Is Vigo the right call? Uh, we skipped right past our Peter Jackson cameo. Oh, um, he's got like the, a hood on in, yeah. in Brie, right? He's eating a carrot oh, yeah. in Brie. <laughs> eating a big, a big carrot Just in the rain. Just wanted to be there. Because you know, you know how people like to stand outside in the rain in the mud and eat a big carrot. You, well, you, well, know, you, have you to. know I do. That's exactly uh, what happens. Also, stay dry. real quick, we should talk about the, the ring wraiths. Uh, sorry, we're we're jumping all over at this beginning section, but the, those ring wraiths are hunting our poor little hobbits down on the road. And we get... Oh, such a good scene when they're hiding yes. under the massive root. Yes. Yeah. And I just don't want to skip over that. Because no, that's good. I'm glad that you did that. The design oh. of the ring wraiths is very, very good. I think it could have gone, it could have gone Dementor on it. You know what I mean? Right. Where it's like they're skeletal and they because the Dementors never really feel like a physical presence right, in right. Harry Potter. They're, and it's because Semi-spiritual they're a digital creation. A little yeah. too ethereal. Yeah. Yeah. I think that this feels so much more grounded and. Yeah. Because of that, so scary. Well, and they're—I mean, even down to the, their horses are frightening, with the nails Do they have up nails? through the hooves. Yeah. yeah, I mean, it's just yeah Ugh. disturbing. This, they, and gross. They were—they kept me up at night yeah. for sure. Reading about so them, them, seeing them on screen. Yeah, there's just something about looking out into the darkness in real life and being like, there, there could be one there, and I couldn't see it. Yeah, and I do I want wanna... to reaffirm that I would—I would still rather be hunted by Dementors than by the Ring Wraiths. Yeah, I do. I do want to dump on the fake out when the ring wraiths kill those poor pillows. Oh yeah, <laughs> the killos. Um, nice. That that falls into those things where we sh- the the tension arises not from the narrative. Right. right. The tension in that is it's because we're, we're shooting it in a way that's intentionally misleading, which can work sometimes. That's a, a genre trope that I don't feel like fits here. <laughs> yeah. It right. almost feels like, oh, stupid. You well, thought that what I was showing you was that is actually from the books, happening. Right? Here's, here's my only thing with this scene that, that redeems it for me is I think we're being shown what the ring wraiths believe they're doing. Does that make sense? Like from the ring wraiths perspective, they are coming in to kill those hobbits and it is about to happen. Yeah. And I then can, we get the moment of relief of, okay, they were wrong. I could defend that if it weren't head hopping where we're jumping from a different jumping to different POV and like it, it makes yeah. sense to head hop among your protagonists like we can have a scene from Frodo's POV we can have one from Aragorn we can have one from Legolas but then to immediately jump and to have one from the ring race in the same place that's not really advancing the narrative it's still telling the same I get that mini story just feels weird to me I've never yeah. really liked that so it is from the book there we go. That's my dump. Com- confirm, I'll, but still, yeah. Oh, the dump. way that it's done is, your is super a dump. dump? Is not even said? close okay. to my super I wanna, dump. I yeah. That's just I got a dump out of the way, so yeah. we can say we're being fair. <laughs> and let's talk about how much we love this movie. <laughs> sure. Um, yeah. Well, they get hooked up with Strider. Yep. Strider. Embry. Uh, and uh, they're off kind of on their merry way at that point, huh? And their Pippin way, exactly. Mm-hmm. Pippin way, yeah, yeah. Pippin along on and their merry way. Are you guys Team Mary or Team Pippin? Pippin. Yeah, Pippin as well. I think I'm Team Mary. Really? Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. Cool. Mm-hmm. If I if I have the right one in my head, I think I'm Team Mary. You're, you're a Brandy Buckaroo. Yeah. Brandy, Brandy, Brandy Buckaroo is uh, my Twitter handle. Follow me. <laughs> Gosh. That might be a bad Twitter. Yeah, don't, I don't follow, know, don't follow that Twitter, follow that Twitter, follow that Twitter handle. Unless you like the show, at Brandy Buckaroo, let us know if you listen to Two Chunks and a Hunk. And then we have The Chase, right? Is that what happens next? The wraiths coming oh, yeah. after them? The long chase. So I think the next super important thing that happens, and we're going to have to jump over. We may end up jumping over your favorite part. We're going to jump over a lot of this. We're going to jump over a lot because we got to get through it in an hour. Yeah. I think the next big thing to talk about is Frodo gets stabbed. Yes. Right? And his eyes get all glassy and With weird. A and he blade. gets a lot of snot. Yeah, exactly. So snotty. Oh, but yeah. this, yeah. because of this, we have the introduction of Arwen. Oh. With Tywo. With Tywo. So he gets stabbed. They get chased. Super cool effect again that still holds up. Yes. This is the one effect that I was like, this might not hold up. Yes. But it did when we have the romping, roaring river yeah. of 
water ponies. Yes. Yeah, that exactly. destroys the rake. <laughs> yeah. I don't and know what else to call no, it. Isn't you that, nailed it. <laughs> isn't that the name of our podcast? Yeah. Water ponies? Welcome to Romping Roaring River of Water Ponies. I am so impressed that you just said that in one take. It's hard. It's Romping really Roaring to... River of Water Ponies. I did, you it, did it too. too. I did it first, so I don't have no, to do it again. That's true. You're yeah. right. We each did it in one take. Let us Leave five stars on iTunes. Let us know <laughs> uh, how good uh, we are at podcasts. I want to pump on Arwen. Yeah, yeah, Liv Tyler was a question mark going in. I was like, that's kind of strange. Yeah. She, had she done Armageddon already? I think so. I think maybe. So. so she had a little bit of on-screen time. And it, I think it was still this in-between of maybe is, is she more known as being Steve Tyler's daughter? Right, or yeah. well, but, is this a favor? The What's crazy happening? thing about her in this movie is that the whole time I am watching, I don't want to close my eyes. I don't want to fall asleep. Yeah. Because I'll miss, miss her. her yeah. You don't, I don't want to miss a thing. Yeah, don't yeah, miss exactly. Thing. Perfect. Wow, I hate that. <laughs> Makes me want animal crackers, I think. Why? From from the movie, from Armageddon. Oh. <laughs> Dude, super deep. You from are a Armageddon. much better movie fan. From than Armageddon. Me. <laughs> there's 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 animal they they make out and they have a Oh animal, yeah, is that the one where the little curly headed girl puts them in her soup? Monkeys and rabbits, they go loop to loop. Exactly. Yeah, that. yeah. That's what Perfect. I thought. Yeah, that's my favorite Aerosmith song. Oh, I love it so much. Oh, Steven, uh, he's a real treat. Hey, you guys want to talk about Lord of the Rings? Oh, that's a good idea. Let's do that. She saves him. Oh, she does. She does a good job of it. She does a really good and job. And then we head to one of our favorite places. Yes. Ooh, Rivendell. Rivendell. Love Rivendell. Uh, do you, are you guys uh, Team Rivendell or Team Lothlorien? Mm, Lothlorien. I agree. Lothlorien. Ah, Lothlorien is really cool. Lothlorien looks Lothlorien better. So That's too. the one I don't want to live so in. So much too. cooler than Rivendell. Anyway, yeah. okay. We love Rivendell. We're excited to get to Lothlorien in a little bit. Well, but we got to stay in Rivendell because big stuff happens. Big yep. stuff. So uh, we get old Bilbo. We get scary Bilbo. Let's we get just scary knock that Bilbo. Out of the way. And we get the formation of the fellowship. Okay, let's talk about that. Can we yep. talk about and that? And we get Aragorn with the sword. Yeah, we do. Um, wait. Don't go over my super dump. Oh. Ooh. And then tell me if it can be one. But when we get old scary Bilbo, yeah, and he does the like yeah, thing, yeah, yeah. I don't super dump on that because it was scary. I think it was supposed to be. I think it was supposed to be an allusion to he had the ring for so long. Look at how how close he was walking a fine line between he and yeah. becoming a Smeagol type character. And it's a moment right, for Frodo right. to go. What what am I getting myself into? Yeah, I'm, right. I'm in trouble. I, I don't know if I liked, I know I didn't like because I, it's in my super dump using the effect that they did. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, it's um, a, little, a little cheesy. Because that seemed out of the realm of possibility in this world yeah, to me. I agree. To have a face transformation anamorphic type thing that, that goes rapidly on. too. <laughs> and that rapidly. I mean, I, I really do think I nearly died in theaters. Oh, I was so scared the first yeah. time I Woo-wee. saw this. I still get tense every time I know it's coming. Woo-wee. So his transformed face. I agree. It is weird because his transformed face looks so much like the little werewolf son from the Munsters to me. Oh wow! <laughs> yes, that's it, good. It is but unbelievable. I think I think his teeth kind of get a little pointy. They too. are. Yeah, they're they all pointy. Yeah, and so that's why I was like, no, it's a I, weird one. Yeah, I don't think so. Because I mean, the understanding is that Smeagol looks the way he does because he's five hundred years old. Right. Right. Exactly. That's not like the ring has turned him into a, a monster. Right. Yeah, so I was, I got it. I totally get what you're trying to do, but that was clearly a special effect. And if you're yeah. being so smart and conservative about how you're using those, I count that as a waste. Yeah, yeah, so, I agree. And that's my super dump. I agree. Interesting. I respect that. I'll d- I dump on that as well, by yeah. the way. Yeah. Um, but I want to talk about the formation of the fellowship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I want to talk about uh, just sort of that whole scene. And, and I want to start with. Gimli breaking his axe. Yep. So good. I so love, cool. Yep. And, and I think it characterizes Gimli immediately. It's just like when thing, I was. Yeah. That's the thing that I love about this scene is because we get bite sized introductions to all these characters and it yes. is their full character. Yep. Yeah, exactly what we so did with are. the Hobbit. Yeah. When, when we were in, in Bag End. That's totally true. much like that in Hobbiton. So yep. um, it's just brilliant screenplay. Yep. I think it's done so well. And uh, because of sort of the brilliance of everything that happens in this scene in Rivendell, um, this is my super pump. Ooh. It, this moment in this movie is sort of the- it's the fellowship of the ring. It is. And it's, and it's sort of the epicenter of everything I love about this movie, yeah. which is, I, I always like to think about this movie is setting up the dominoes that will be knocked over in the following two movies. Yeah. And mm. um, that sort of the structure of this movie is yeah. everyone you need to know, everything you need to understand, every place that's important. 
And now those people will go to those places to do those things. Yeah. And that's sort of how this movie functions. This is the domino of all the dominoes. Yeah. This is the moment where we meet everybody take, take who matters note, to us. Uh, ho- title writers of the Hobbit series actually do what you say you do in the title. Yeah. yeah. That's helpful. I think <sighs> a good point. But th- this the, whole- The implied and feared desolation of smell. Yeah. <laughs> right. The quick, rapid desolation. <laughs> the um, very long battle of five armies. But uh, th- this whole, I mean, what is this scene? 10 minutes? Yeah. I, yeah. The tra- if, if that long. Yeah. This, this eight to 10 minutes of this movie is the make or break scene of this movie for me. I have a pump that mm-hmm. is inside your super pump. Oh, it's like a little. Uh, there's, like a uh, little there's a lot of pumps in here. Beef Wellington. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Uh, this is the Beef Wellington of podcast entertainment. And <laughs> that comes in the reveal of Aragorn yeah, as the, so the heir of Isildur. So good. Uh, when Boromir says, Gondor has no king. Mm. Gondor needs no king. Right. Because his dad is the steward, the steward of Gondor. Yeah. Like, he's devoted his life to protecting Gondor. Yep. And the idea that this random guy can come and supersede his authority mm. is incredibly distasteful to Boromir. This <laughs> is the first third of my super pump. Oh, okay. Interesting. So I can talk about the last the last two thirds of it, or we can wait till we get there. You want to you want to space it out? Let's space. We'll it space out. it out. And and here's the thing: uh, Boromir actually has another moment uh, later on with Aragorn that was almost my super pump, and it was oh okay sorry <laughs> yeah right when you said let's not go into the two thirds. Well, I didn't know you that fell was into two-thirds. it. This That's is funny. very interesting. You this have is going to be crazy. Trap. <laughs> if we end up having the same one in a movie like this, that's going to be really weird. Um, but uh, a pump that I had also at the fellowship. Was when Frodo says, I'll take it. Oh, good. I'll take yes. the ring. But you, you talk again about how Ian McKellen had that moment where we just had his face and he has the realization, oh, this is the one ring. We see again, it, they give us his oh, perspective, man. looking at his face when Frodo has said, I'll yes. take it. And oh my. How it yes. clearly breaks Gandalf's heart. It breaks yeah, it well, his and heart. I want to pump on Elijah Wood's performance in that scene as yeah. well because he communicates something and it's something that I don't know that I ever really picked up on until this time through. Yeah. Um, but he communicates with the way that he handles himself in this scene so much fear, but also selfishness. Yeah. He he simultaneously communicates, I am afraid to do this and I will do it anyway. But at the same time, he seems to be communicating I don't want anyone else to have this. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's great. And it's so nuanced and so good. This is also the first time I've picked that up. Is there a layer of Gandalf says the ring is going to try to return home? Is there a layer of the ring influencing Frodo to say, hey, take me home? I think so. Take me back to Sauron. Yeah. I've never picked up on that until this time. He he just he does something with his face that's almost a jealousy for the ring. And what's great too is, man, how you get to manifest. Like the ring is a character. Like how crazy, yeah. how awesome yeah. is that? Uh, and there's a way that you get to do that, obviously by the dialogue and the characters of other people uh, in the movie. But with the ring too, now that you've said that, it's like the ring is is telling Frodo to pick me because he knows, or what it knows, that Frodo will take the ring at least close enough to Sauron. Whereas if Boromir has it, it's going straight to Gondor to fight yep. Yep. to fight everybody in the world. And if, if someone else has it, it's not going to go right. where it needs to go yeah. for ultimate power. And I don't think Amazing. I've ever fully appreciated that until yeah, this time around. Yeah, I, I think I used to, at a younger age, dump on Frodo just because he seemed so like, <laughs> no, I did too. Yeah, I didn't you know, like and, him. And I didn't I, understand. I wanted Aragorn strange. to be the hero. Yeah. You right. know what I mean? Yeah, right. Or even Sam or somebody yeah. who was like, not such a wimp, but I get it. Like you, the ring has that kind of effect on you. Yeah. But um, we've got our fellowship together. They give us a what does not feel out of place. There's there's movies sometimes to where they'll give you here's the whole squad, and you feel like, well, that was kind of going what out of we, your way sort of to show everybody all together. Um, but it didn't feel too much like Dillard's photo shoot. <laughs> but. <laughs> but it was like everybody's all together. And I think that was to, again, let's flex our muscles and show yeah. here's exactly what they Completely look like. Agree. But, and, and, and this so is where good. we start to get the big sweeping landscape shots that this series is oh, really well known we, for. We, we barely kind of had it in the brilliantly shot chase scene when, yeah. before we get to Rivendell. But yeah. no, the sweeping. No, this is just them journeying. Basically, they're, they're boxed into a corner. They have to go through Moria. 
Yes. Yeah. Right. Is that a co- okay place to pick it up? Yeah. Let's, let's go to Moria. Yeah. Speak that's friend fine. and enter. Go to Moria. Speak uh, friend and enter. So is such a wonderful scene. I think. Big big dump on the kraken in the pond. Yeah. I don't yeah. love that. That does not hold up, and we do not need that. I don't love that, but I do love. I do love. It is in the. It is in the book. But yes, the door. Mm. We could have done without. I love the door. I think we. I think we should a hundred percent eliminate Squidward from this story. I like it as a way to force mm-hmm. them in when they decide that they might not want to go in, but I, well, I, yeah, it also means you can't go back out. Right. Because yeah. it, it destroys everything. Right. So yeah. I think I think I mean I understand having that in a book. And again, narrative structure is super different in a long form novel than in a three hour movie. Sure. Uh, than in a tight three hour movie. I think we could have just we could have saved that time and said, Hey, there's an enchantment. We can't open the door back up. Yep. The speakers on the outside, it can't hear us say friend. <laughs> <laughs> they right. can't tell we're saying friend and we're in here. Uh, I'm gonna yep. pump two things immediately when we walk into Moria. Okay, hit me. Uh and and this was kind of the nutshell uh Sparknotes version of why they won Oscars for certain things. But we go right into Moria and they talk about how this is one of the the greatest hall in all of maybe Middle Earth, but definitely for the dwarves. How did they make something so simple at first? Because all we see are the massive columns seem so epic. Like yeah. they made that wonderful. I'll tell you how. Howard Shore. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Plays with my heart strengths. Yeah. He, won a, he won an Oscar. And the violin for, strings. Yes, yeah, he won an Oscar for this movie. Um, but just any combination and then how it just fits. It's like you have your lower brass anytime there's either like a fight or the dwarves. And then mm-hmm. they get to be really kind of ethereal with the elves. I think it's just so yeah. good. So good. And speaking of dwarves, we do get this wonderful scene in uh, The Room at the Well. Yes where we discover the body of Balin. R.I.P., man. Now we know who that is. Yeah. Now we've spent three movies with him. Yeah. I know. Bummer. It's, yeah. But uh, we get uh, get our good buddy. Is it Pippin that knocks it down the well? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Pippin knocks it down the well, and next time he should just go ahead and jump in. Full of a toque, you know? When we were were told. I went through this phase in high school, uh, and I, I do regret it. But there was a time Fedoras. And it was not Fedoras. It was Fedoras of the Mouth, in which I called I called people that I disagreed with jokingly. I referred to them as fool of a toque. No, you didn't. And thought that I was just about the funniest person who'd ever been born. No. Uh, that's pretty funny. I though. don't believe you. I a hundred percent. This is a oh, real a thing. Toque. A real thing that happened. I dig it. Yeah. It was it's rough. I dig it. It is kind of fedora of the mouth disease. It a little bit point, is. Yeah. Uh, we also get a heartbroken Gimli. Ugh. And I think it Carter, goes, what does he sound I like? I think it goes something like Ah. Ah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> 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 Ah, <laughs> okay. I did not know this until <laughs> like many times having watched this movie. Carter <laughs> played Gimli. Carter played Gimli. No, you know who did play Gimli? Yeah, uh, John Rice Davies. Uh-huh. Yeah. Sala from Indiana Jones. Yeah, yeah. Indy. Had, yeah, yeah had same no idea. Yeah, love love it. pretty crazy. Yeah, and um, we, all, we all knew that. Love, <laughs> love how he gets to say, "Okay, cool." We, I, okay. Oh, I get really excited. Is this the first time we get to really see them fight? All together? Yes. I think so, yeah. Yes. And they did it in a closed space. I know. It's so good. It's wild. O-M-G. And we get... We Legolas get is beautiful. hopping all over him. Shooting through the door. But, but, but not, not, a, shooting through the, but not in a, a dumb way. Oh, Legolas is hopping, but gosh. not in a dumb like, right. anti-gravity and way. And I want to say, just real quick, this movie has... I got worried going into Fellowship. Because this is the first time I've rewatched The Hobbit in forever. And I was like, have I built up Legolas in my mind to be t- it's yeah, only been about no. a year since I've rewatched these but I was like have I built up Legolas to be t-? no he's back he's amazing he's the way he was meant to be in Orlando Bloom I love you again yeah. his contacts don't distract me in this correct I thought they would so the story is that they keep kept forgetting to put in his blue contacts so there's some scenes where Legolas has Orlando Bloom brown eyes yeah and sometimes he has Orlando blue eyes Orlando blue eyes exactly it doesn't uh, bother me it's cool I'm, I'm glad that we get to see the trifecta of Gimli Legolas uh, Aragorn oh, yeah, at, yes. at this point because yeah. um, man they balance each other so well and it's yeah. so cool to see them fight together um, your classic it's been used a million times in movies this one did it one of the best times I've ever seen when you're hiding behind the column and the, yeah. the yeah. camera does the thing to where you're like you know it's there but it ends up coming out the other side yeah. Cave yeah. Troll looked pretty good Cave Troll held up for couple me times, yeah. couple of times it got a little shrecky yeah <laughs> but by and large looked Get pretty out good of my good death <laughs> cool death Finish him move with Legolas. Yeah, yeah that Big was time. really great. Much love. Big time. I actually, I actually want to pump on the fake out of Frodo getting stabbed 
And I, I, the reason I want to pump is because I saw it through the lens of a couple first timers who literally went, oh my gosh, again. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then when it was the reveal of the Mithril. Mithril. Yeah. And they went, oh. And I was like, that's exactly what Peter Jackson wanted in that moment. Yep. 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 So it was good. beautiful. I loved it. And it illustrates the Mithril. Yeah. Right. Now we know what it does and now yeah. we see how it works. Now we're trying to get out of there, scramble, out of the scramble, scramble. scramble. Another expansive, like, huge shot when we do have the creepy crawly. Uh-huh. Goblet orcs, uh-huh. so v good, and they're surrounding them. They're surrounding them, and then they've awakened something. <laughs> they've awakened something from deep, deep, deep in the earth. Something ancient. This holds up. Oh, so like well, my gosh! Nothing I have seen. The Balrog is amazing. Balrog when- absolutely holds up. I'd say better than some special effects in movies that have been released in the last year. Oh, yes. absolutely. Like it, it works, and I don't know how. It 100% works. S- sparing. It's, absolutely. It's sparing. Like when it roars and you can see the heat waves and just how it's kind of enveloped in smoke most mm-hmm. of the time. And so we don't stays. technically see. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. All of it. This is an example of one of those spoilers we were talking about, but the payoff of all of what's about to happen in like one of the, is it the opening scene of Two Towers? I think so. Yeah, it yeah. is. Just falling yep. in darkness. Yep. Ugh. Gandalf fighting the Balrog. Give oh, it to me. Oh man, it's so I good. I need it. Yeah. It's so good. It's so, so good. He sh- the Balrog shall not pass. Yep, he, right. he certainly he shall not pass. He certainly not. breaks that bridge. He Fly falls down. Fly, you fools. Look out. Magna Whip yep. grabs mm-hmm. him around the ankles. Fly, you fools. Uh, so Ian, th- this was the only time we ever had an acting nomination mm-hmm. for Oscar. And it, it was in this one for Gandalf. For Ian McKellen. Yeah. Um, wow. Which is just so good. Then we have really heartbreaking. Everyone yeah. like thinks he's gone. And speaking of people who think he's gone, this will be the last time I mentioned the two newbies watching Lord of the Rings with me. At this moment of recording, they still believe that Gandalf died in Fellowship of the Ring. Hey, yep. now. Isn't that the greatest thing yeah, in the yeah, world? Yeah, that's, that's really good. great. I can't wait to hear what they think I whenever know. he comes back. I'm very excited about it. Hey, that, don't, don't let them listen to this. I won't. Okay. <laughs> they will have watched it before this comes out. That's that, true. That goes back to how we talked about how a lot of people probably didn't read Lord of the Rings right. when this yeah, came out. Right. And so it gets to have had this any. extra effect on everything. So, uh, oh, and everybody's sad. And then Gimli's like, ah, ah. <laughs> the crying. Everybody's sitting around crying. Yeah. Almost didn't work for me. This oh, time. okay. Me. There, there was almost a like, oh, okay, this isn't the CW. Like, he it died, but you didn't know him that well. I will say this. I want to acknowledge the joke that is set up in the chase from the Balrog. Okay. Nobody tosses a dwarf. Yeah. Oh, let's yeah. just let's just all as a collective group hold on to that. Remember those words. Yeah, we'll, we'll call back to that later on. Yeah. But uh, yeah, we get him crying outside, and we get some, uh, some, some, some walkie walks. Hey, didn't it feel good to be chased? By a thousand enemies and not feel Magui. Yes. Yes. Yep. There it's is a mix of these people being capable to actually fight back. Yes. Um, you're just oh oh when there's a camera shot that they do maybe a couple times, but I think the first time was in Moria near the bridge of uh-huh. Kazakh Doom. But when Legolas, like the camera is from the arrow's point of view, uh-huh. going through the through the head of Homeboy from yeah. like five hundred yards away. Yeah. Yeah. So incredible. So after after we mourn Gandalf yep. is is Lothlorien the next place yep. we need to talk about? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because they're sad. So sad. They're we'll sad get, and they're... Uh, and the elves are singing for him mm-hmm. because he's, a, like, he's a legend a legend of... Yeah. Gandalf died from the Balrog. Great. Grinch. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. So we get... Goodness gracious. We get Galadriel. We do. How do we feel about Galadriel? I love her. Man, huge she pump. she really is a huge pump. Um, I think do they they don't even tell us it's her voice at the beginning, right? But I think you kind Correct. of recognize it as soon as you hear yeah. her. Yeah. Um, she just carries like this elegant power. It's such a weird. I think she makes it look way easier than it actually was to Absolutely. portray. Man, she does the same as Hela in Thor Ragnarok. She, yeah. She has this gift of portraying terrifying elegance. Yeah. Oh, yep. that's really good. And she does the opposite in Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull, sure, sure. where she's just everything bad. does the opposite in yeah. Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. That's true. Uh, but you we get movie, while we are you. in uh, Avatar Elf World. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh, well, well done. While we while we are here, we get uh, some scheming, some plotting, and we get some uh, looking into water. 
we have also, before we look into water, we have the second third of my super poem. Oh. Which is when Boromir and Aragorn are talking, and Boromir says, you and I, we could be stewards of Gondor, essentially. You mm-hmm. and I, we could fix Gondor. And Aragorn, Viggo Mortensen plays this so well. The look on his face when he says, I know that that can't be what happens because I he like doesn't want to be king. What you know an right? actor. Yeah. It, it's just their, their continuing relationship. So you can probably guess what the last third oh, is going to be. Oh, I definitely can. But it was we'll get there. Last. We'll right. get there in a little bit. Uh, but I, I want to spend a couple seconds at the bowl of water yep. because great. love. I actually love the effect of the tower moving closer to Frodo as he looks on. I find it very frightening. Yeah. Yeah, I dig it. I want to super dump in this moment. <gasps> Do it. On the effect of Galadriel. Yeah. When she turns all dark and negative-y. I, I, this is an example of, I blamed it in The Hobbit and was like, they shouldn't have done it this time. It worked in Fellowship. It doesn't work in Fellowship. It didn't work there, I was no. wrong. It doesn't work It anywhere. looks really bad. They it probably really could have bad. done it. Because Gandalf has a moment like this too. Yes. Uh, because, where he just almost feels like he's just becoming a tree. Yeah. and just is, Everything goes dark it's, around it's, him. It's, it's, it's really like camera work. It's more yeah. camera work than a special effect. But yeah, I agree with that. It It, it is cringy, actually. Like, in, in a movie full of wonderful effects and wonderful moments, this sticks out like a sore thumb as a moment that I felt the need to apologize to the room of people I was watching the movie with. I was like, it's the worst thing in the whole series. Don't well, worry and, about it. And rem- yeah. especially the fact that she comes right out of that and goes, I did it. I passed the test. Yeah. It's goofy. like, oh man, this just weird. feels weird. Yeah. Although yeah. I love I love her saying, I will go west and remain Galadriel. I think that's great. Yes. I think that's great. The rest of it, can not so much be, I don't know. I agree. narratively this makes sense but the effect itself is so goofy. correct i totally agree correct and that the, the effect similar is similar super, super dump. dumps similar super dumps i mm. see yeah i actually yeah. almost jumped on it but yeah yeah so uh in lothlorien mm. uh is kind of when frodo decides that he's got to go his own way right he go his yeah. own way. and he gets galadriel's tears what is it the light the light of their star. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. So he gets that foreshadowing, and uh, <laughs> they head off on their swan boats. Exactly. They pass the Kings of Men statues. Love how Gimli is starting to turn around a little bit on the elves mm-hmm. yep. because he is just as starstruck as we are yep. with Galadriel. Yep. 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 So we get, uh, now we have the scene. I think the next important thing is the Boromir and Frodo's conversation. Yeah, when Boromir has, right? I'm realizing now uh, that it's kind of difficult to talk about this movie at this pace. I know it's so hard because I keep being like, "Is the movie paced weird?" And then I'm like, "Nope, it's no, us. We trying are to sprint we past, are. and it's everything. because it's a like I said earlier, it's a tight three hours. There's nothing really you can is. cut, and and I want to talk about every aspect. But since we can't, you're right. Let's talk about Frodo and Boromir. Yeah, um, I want to give all the props in the world to Sean Bean. Scene Bean, props. Sean Bond yeah. does an incredible job. He, his moment of give me the ring, it's mine. Frodo runs away, and then he says, "Frodo." What have I done? I mean, oh, yeah. it is goodness gracious. Good. Sean, I mean, Sean Bean is my super pump. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Sean Bean as a whole. Yeah. Um, because he's, as far as I remember, I mean, he's really one of our only, so here's what Sean Bean is to me. When a shuttle is taking off to go to the moon. Yep. It gets to a certain point, at least gets it to outer space <laughs> yep. before the two big, turbines or whatever just kind of fall off to the side it's like okay i've given you enough energy to get this far um and he is that to me yeah i yeah. wish i had better terms for no, it no that I, you crush i it. don't speak out of space but he does that for he does that, the rings well yes and he does that for he does that for game of thrones absolutely yep. and he does that for national treasure and it's not only <laughs> oh my goodness yeah gracious it's all the it's all the uh plot carrying type yeah. stuff Yep. And that's that's such a massive weight. He contextualizes Aragorn in a way that I don't think I realized until this watch through. Yes. Yeah. Well, I, and, and he even serves to contextualize Frodo yeah. as, as the rightful ring bearer. Exactly. So he also just big pump on his relationship with Merry and Pippin. Yeah. We see that a thread. They're wrestling. Oh, I love it yeah. so much. They're so it they're it's fantastic. I'm yeah. running out of words. It's so good. It is so good. Um, so we have the confrontation then with the orcs, right? The, Sorry. The, the, the These are Urukai. Were you yeah. done? I we no, we jumped no, we're all good. over your super. That's okay, totally sorry. fine. So now we have the confrontation uh, after after this performance, this this scene. We have the confrontation with the Urukai. Yeah, and they're right? a little different than orcs. They have the ah. hand of Sauron on them because they're being blessed. These are the ones that are kind of getting birthed. Getting born out of the mud. Incubated. Right? From mud poop. Yeah. yeah, from mud poop around 
uh, Isengard. Yep, which the, because Sauron has decided tear down them trees. Yep. But I I love an allusion to how the forest is alive for a little bit because one of the orc comes up and says, "Hey, the 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 force is kind of fighting back. Like yep. this is a lot harder than we thought it would be." Yep. And even as they're tearing it down, they're terrified of this. So I love how even though it's not all machinery, we see a machine side to the orc in the Urukai. Yeah. Uh, it is very much a mechanical versus natural Absolutely. fight in Middle Earth, Absolutely. and and that's a big deal for the whole franchise. And they the, do it really well to start. The Urukai hold up in a really, really big way. We, they do. We they are so scary. Yes, I and, think they do. And I and the birth, them. the birth of the Urukai too. When yeah. when they're coming out of that weird, Just so gross. Oh, it is disgusting. Although, is Mud Placenta a good metal band name? Yes. Okay. And we can go ahead and check that one off for first time. Yeah, maybe dibs on ever. that one. Yeah, wow, that's a good one. Um, after the Frodo and uh, Sanbon uh, confrontation up on top of this hill, he <laughs> and just disappears. He bounces. I can't do that. And uh, Aragorn has a wonderful scene. Ooh, there where Frodo fight? is afraid. Oh yes, of him. And Aragorn comes up and just closes Frodo's hand. Ugh, it's sh- yeah. Every time. Everything is pointing to destiny for this guy. It is. It's like, yep. wow, you have a certain amount of, of, with, of uh, what is the word? Holding back from something mm-hmm. that you would rather do. Says, Restraint. Restraint, says, yeah. I would, follow, I, would, I would have followed you all the way into the fires of mountain. And the way that he, he somehow manages to deliver lines in a sigh or in like this, like I'm totally in. Like this thing that he does, it's so good. Like I don't think, yeah. I think he gets lost in the performances of, Sometimes, or or maybe with me when I'm when I'm talking about how much I love the series, he gets lost in the Ian McKellen's. Well, he's Sean less Beans. boisterous than and, them, right? But it's so it's subtle, a lot more it's, subtle. It's really, yeah. really, really well done. Yeah. Uh, but then we get the coolest fight scene of the whole movie so far. Yeah. With our big three going crazy yeah. all over yeah, some yeah. Urukai. We get Boromir getting shot, shot, shot with arrows. And uh, of course, we get our two baby boy hobbits taken away they to where I wonder. We'll tooken. talk about that. They get taken. So took. I want nice. <laughs> I want to. I want to talk about. Yep, Boromir. Yeah, let's do it. We've got this time. scene contains my super dump. Whoa, my super dump is that we decided apparently in post that we wanted to include slow motion in our movie. Yeah, and so we said, what can we do? Oh, we'll just play the frame slowly. And somebody said, Mr. Jackson, there's not enough. And he said, that's fine. That's okay with me. And just make it look like a slideshow. The slow motion in this is so bad. It's very yeah, bad. it is bad. But the death of Boromir. Yep. Boromir. So I'm trying to step on your toes with, with scene being as your super pump. No. Yeah, go. The the death of Boromir, his final conversation with Aragorn. Part three of the super part pump. Part three of my super pump. Yep how his arc is completed. And and these are the three reasons why Boromir is my super pump. Yeah. Uh, totally took me by surprise. I was not expecting to respond this way to his story, but it, it was far and away the highlight of the movie for me this time. Uh, his final conversation with Aragorn, where he Oof. realizes the necessity, Aragorn, you're a, essentially Aragorn. You're a better man than I, because yeah. you resisted the ring. You deserve to be King of Gondor. The way that this plays out in a three beat. We've talked about three beats on the show before. Right. The pattern of a three beat is to establish, to reinforce, and then subvert. So we establish that he doesn't want anybody to be king of Gondor except the stewards in right. the fellowship scene. We reinforce that when he says, Aragorn, you and I could be stewards of Gondor. And then we finally subvert that in a really meaningful way when he essentially relinquishes rights over Gondor to Aragorn. Mm-hmm. At the well, end of his life. And doesn't he sort of echo Aragorn to Frodo? Doesn't he say something about like, I would have followed you or I, you would have been my king or, or, or something like that along those lines in this moment? Maybe. Uh, it's entirely possible that I'm remembering that because I wish that he had said something Right, like yeah, that, yeah, no, so. me too. Um, so we, we got to kind of burn through the very end of what's wow, happening dude. here. Too soon. Uh, there's like a Viking burial and they light Boromir on fire. They but don't yeah. actually. Mm-mm. They just push oh, him over just the waterfall. Down the, Maybe yeah. watch oh, the movie I forgot, next time. I forgot Carter. Legolas missed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Legolas, is, his contacts were is in. There, wait, is there not a burial like that later? There sure is. There's one later. Yeah. We will burn like the heathen kings of old is in two mm. movies. So. <laughs> it's so it's cool. My friend Doge will, or my friend Adam will edit that out. Won't he? <laughs> 
I don't think he will. Thanks, Adam. Uh, he said, never no. seen He's this movie. His He's shaking his head. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> but uh, so we get another example of something that was almost my super pump here at the very end. Do we it. get Sam running to Frodo in the canoe. Oh, yeah. And when he says, when Frodo says, I have to go alone. Or, or I'm sorry, I'm going to Mordor alone. Mm-hmm. And Sam says, of course you are. And I'm coming with you. Yeah. Oh that my goodness. That sums up Samwise Gamgee perfectly. Absolutely. That and him instant drowning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's that's true. Yeah. I was on, and I think because I, I was affected so strongly by Boromir, I was on the brink of tears at his death. And oh, like man. this very nearly pushed me yeah. over. I mean, it's just, the ending of this movie is so good. And then, yeah. of course, we get, you know, a final shot of Mary and Pippin being carted away. And then we get our big three. Yeah. Our big three. Let's Gimli, go hunt Legolas, some more. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. oh, man. It's awesome. Yeah. It, isn't it though? <laughs> it really is. I just want to like, I want to go home and watch the two towers as soon as we're done with this. I have already come to grips with the fact that I'm just going to watch them and then rewatch them when it's time to record the episode. Yeah, that's nice. fair enough. I have to do it. <laughs> nice. I literally have to do it. So uh, let's sprint through the very end of this episode with uh, ratings and all that stuff. How do we feel about that, boys? Sounds Let's good to me. It's time to do it. Here at Two Chunks in a Hunk, we've perfected the art of movie writing using the art of science, the scientific cinema scale trademark, Two Chunks in a Hunk Incorporated, LLC. It is as follows. The best thing we can ever say about a movie is to own it, don't lend it, buy buy that that poster. poster. The next best thing we can ever say is to buy it. After that, it's going to be rented. That's going to be followed by stream it. The second worst and also next thing, wow, butchered that, is going to be forget it. And last, but certainly least, the worst thing we can ever say about a movie. God God hath forsaken forsaken us. Anybody want to go first? I sure do. If you had asked me one week ago before I had watched this what I would rate it, I would say buy it. I think that I did not did not really get this movie as a kid. I didn't mm-hmm. realize that it was supposed to end on a bummer and supposed to end in this heavy place. Yeah. And I think as I've grown older and watched it, I I realized that is actually the role that this story needs to play if we're going to have a cohesive trilogy. This movie is an own it don't lend it by that poster for yep. me. This is Absolutely phenomenal. Probably my favorite movie that we've watched for the podcast so far. So I'm going to jump in right here with my rating. I wanted to give this a buy it because I wanted to be like, well, it's not fair to start off Lord of the Rings with like a crazy high rating. And I wanted to be a fair guy and be like, it's a buy it. Like, it's so good. But no, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to follow my heart. This movie is an own it. Don't lend it. Buy that poster. Get it tattooed on your butt cheeks. This is that good. Uh, Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 2 is the highest ranked movie in the Harry Potter series on IMDb's Top 250. Okay. They just do kind of a, a 250 based off of their rankings, little sprinkled Metacritic kind of thing in there. Uh, it was number 216. Okay. Um, the Lord of the Rings, The Fellowship of the Ring, which is not even the highest rated in the series, is is IMDb's 11th best movie of all time. Yeah. Um, absolutely buy that buy, buy that poster um, because it's one of the greatest movies made of all time. It just is. I Spoiler, I guess, my the only thing on my walls outside of an old Shaquille O'Neal poster on the back of my door is back at home in Lampasas, Texas, where I was growing up, framed them. Spent the money to frame every movie poster of Lord of the Rings. Yep. Yep. It's literal. Yep. So <laughs> buy that poster for Fellowship of the Ring. And I can hear I can hear the iPhone clicks of Harry Potter fans already revving up their engines. Sorry. Sorry, this is a good one. There's yeah, good Harry Potter. Th- it doesn't diminish how good Harry Potter no, is. No, and I, I, I bought a Harry Potter poster as well in this in this series here. Was it so, mislabeled? Were you trying to buy Lord of the Rings? Or no, did you no, find no. It in the wrong section? No, it was actually Harry Potter. And so and we have talked about it, but yeah. the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Oh, it's just a thing. Guys. It's like a it's like a next level. When you sit down with people, uh, and so say you maybe have a group of twelve, let's say of nine, let's have a fellowship sized yeah. group of people, and they vaguely like movies. Uh, what's your favorite movie of all time? There's always going to be at least one person that says, uh, does it count to just put all the Lord of the Rings series together? Yeah. I can't remember the last time that I've done that and someone doesn't say that. And it's Somebody not me. Either says that or they say Return of the King. Yep. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. So, 
All that to say, it's not a zero-sum game. You can love Harry Potter. You can love Lord of the Rings. You can love Star Wars more than both of them. You can love Doctor Who more than any of these four things. The bottom line is, that's the best thing about movies, is that you can find what speaks to you, and you can love what you love. Yes. Unashamedly. Unless you like Suicide Squad. Yeah, that's a bad one. Mm, not according to you. So, <laughs> as we move forward, let's... uh. Talk about some shouties. Shouties. I've got a fun shout out first. Oh, give it to us. So young young man where I work, mm. um, I don't remember his name. It's okay. It's not worth it. Uh, we were talking, <laughs> uh, we were talking uh, just a couple days ago and he said, hey man, you're on that podcast, right? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Two chunks. Yeah. Hey man, I think it's so cool that you guys are still doing that, even though it hardly gets any views. It's cool that y'all are just kind of committing to that. Was that a compliment? No, no, no. I don't think he's a bad guy. I think he's a good guy. I think he's a bad person. I think he's a really good guy. But dude, shout out to you. That's my number one super dump shout out. Yeah. Goes to you, faceless man who thought that only two people. To the contrary, there are thousands and thousands of people that don't really watch it anymore. Because there's but, no videos but now. download yeah. these episodes. So, <laughs> so good man on and a boo-boo. Good on you. This guy's just like, man, I can't wait till they watch something other than Infinity War. <laughs> <laughs> it's been months. Nanner, nanner, boo uh, I have another shout out to you. But. Go for it. Um, so I had stumbled upon a lunch today uh, to where I got to have lunch with a good friend of mine named Mason. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mason Hall. And so he was telling me, he had actually, it's one of those fun things with the Harry Potter series for him that he really only caught ever uh, like bits and pieces. It was like he had seen two and five, a little bit of six and the end of the last one because it was like some ABC family marathon, yeah. movie marathon. He said, but I'll tell you what, he said like I'm going through the movies now and watching them on the Harry Potter side like as soon as y'all like as soon as it's coming up. So we have, I love when there's influence from the podcast yeah. Yeah. to go and watch movies. Not yeah. even not even good movies. Harry Potter's good movies. Yeah. But like if it if it makes you want to get into this more and dive in, I'm all for it. That's one of the best encouragements I can get. Absolutely. Is that you're watching movies. People want to watch movies. Right. Yeah. And you also want to hear us talk about it. Like you want to hear our opinions on it too. And if you agree with that. So. That's the craziest part. Right. Wanting to watch movies is not crazy. <laughs> right. Right. So. So if you'd like to earn a shout out, it's super easy. You can go to twochunksandahunk.com and you can contact us on there. Send in your pumps and dumps or any other interesting movie related things you come across. Uh, We've got a couple of cool stuff that we'll probably be sharing on future episodes. Stuff that people have sent in to us. So thank you if you have emailed us. And if you want to earn our love by helping us out, the best thing that you could possibly do is go on to iTunes or Google Store or wherever you get your podcasts and leave us a review, preferably of the five-star variety, but you follow your heart on that one. A written review is also going to help us out a ton. Really, that's the best way you can possibly support us right now. Carter, tell them why. I'll tell you why. It's because if we get up to 200 ratings with an average of four stars. We're currently at 44 with an average of five. So we're, we're doing good to help with our star count average after two full years of the podcast. If we get that, those 200, then we have the opportunity to become Rotten Tomatoes critics. Yes. Um, which for us is a huge deal. Like a dream deal. Yeah, and that's it would crazy. be great. Like, and I'm not going to try and fake you out and make you think that we even have an end in sight to this podcast in terms of its longevity, barring something crazy happening. Um, we've planned far ahead, but that would really add a lot to be able to throw a stamp up there that says certified, 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 green fried tomatoes. green tomatoes, um, certified Rotten Tomatoes critics. It's a possibility for us. We would love that from you guys. And it's awesome. actually really, really easy. You know what else is really, really easy? Tell me. Hmm. Um, getting crushed by like a demon from the middle of of, of Middle Earth. Oh wow! Like a Balrog. Okay, like a Balrog. Kind of thing. This wow. is really yeah. intense of you. All of a sudden, that's easy. Why are you being so intense? Why would that happen to somebody? Like if you don't subscribe, basically oh, is what I would oh, be doing this again. Oh, okay. What's wrong with you, man? Also happen. I'm really. I'm honestly. I'm trying to hold back. Carter, we downloaded Slack I am. so that I could message you and say, "Please don't freak out." Tonight. Yeah, we told. We begged you not to do this. If I had the choice between, um having to eat the dead body of Boromir or hear or discover that someone else has not subscribed fork and knife, please. Wow. You know why? You know why? Why? It's made of beans. <laughs> <laughs> Sean beans. Wow. I hated that. Wow. But subscribe, please. Yeah, I guess please subscribe. What a bad thing that you've done. <laughs> because this is about talking about 
two series simultaneously. Right. Why don't we bring who we think? I, I don't know. Should there be parameters? Let's let's bring somebody from the Harry Potter world who should join the fellowship. Who should join the fellowship? Are we booting somebody? Ooh. No. We, well, we lost Boromir. Oh. Who's our who's, who's our, our replacement? Boromir replacement? Ooh. Okay, a better Boromir, somebody who's not going to be tempted by the ring. We actually need somebody that we feel like is going to help destroy the ring. So I would say part of the factor would be not going to be tempted by it. And and just like you, how you can't say a battle between any two things that ever lived or something, you can't say you can't say Jesus in some of these things. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say you can't say Dumbledore. Okay, okay. fair enough. I've got, I got mine. mine. I would add Hagrid to the mix because he's loyal, brave. And gigantic. He's Big Sam. <laughs> <laughs> Big Sam. <laughs> Sam and Big Sam. Samissimo. All right. Uh, uh, all right, Mr. Potter. I mean, uh, Frodo. I can't carry you. And I can't carry Sam. I can carry both of you. I would add Remus Lupin because Ooh, he nice. is experienced living with a curse and a stigma. So he will not be tempted by the ring. And he can also transform into a werewolf that they can ride like a war. Whoa. That's pretty good. Love that. And I would take Minerva McGonagall <laughs> because I simply want to have her be there to tell Smeagol that will there will be no and then just like no, fill in anything. the blank like a mom like a nanny sure, sure. Mary and Pippin return to your yeah. dormitory yes. yes. that's what I was thinking yeah. she can oh, really whip yes. those two boys into so shape good. keep them out of trouble but hey she's the grab them by the ears kind of person that we need and, yeah. and we don't have that in the fellowship yep, yep. so no, that's really that's good. great <laughs> that's really good the only way that I can think of to end this episode is for each of us to give our best ring wraith shriek. So for two chunks and a hunk, I'm. If anyone listens to this, this is a miracle. For two chunks and a hunk, I am. And I am. No, thank you. I don't want to subscribe to two chunks and a hunk. <laughs> I'd rather hunt. Alive people and live as a dead person that you can only see when you have the reading online. <laughs>